Let's be honest, your laptop webcam quality sucks, but that's not your fault because most laptop manufacturers ship their laptops with tiny and crappy sensors because, well, it's a cost savings measure. I mean, think about it this way. If modern smartphones can shoot better quality video that's actually comparable to a proper camera, why can't laptops? Well, other than the cost factor, there's also not much depth to install a better camera inside the bezel. But either way, what I'm gonna do in this video is share some tips that you could use to enhance the visual quality of built-in webcams. And the first thing is something that's overlooked all the time, and that's to clean the darn thing. Because look, most laptops have their webcams right at the area where you open the laptop from. So any sort of finger oil or grease or whatever nastiness you've been touching would just paint itself over the sensor. And you guessed it, that causes a ton of blurriness and if you have any light source above you, it just creates a halo effect. So before you hop into a meeting, just take a microfiber cloth and simply wipe down the sensor. You can also use an isopropyl alcohol solution if you really wanna get the dirt and grime off of it. The second tip is probably the most important when it comes to improving your webcam quality, and that's lighting. You see, as a content creator, I value lighting above anything else, including the gear that I use to shoot these videos. And remember, the smaller and thinner the lens area, the more light a camera will need to make it work properly. And these built-in webcams are just so small, so light will always benefit them, but you also have to manage that light properly as well. Here are a few examples of poor lighting setups. The first one is having a bright light source like this massive window behind me. The sensor basically compensates for the highlights like the background and completely crushes the subject resulting in more noise and overall an unpleasing image. Another example is when you have an artificial light source right above you. Now, this is pretty common in a workspace setting. So it once again blows out the background while trying to balance the exposure of your face. It's passable, but we could do better. The last setting I have over here is probably the worst case scenario, and that's extreme low light conditions where you're working with very limited light sources. That results in more noise as the sensor is trying to adjust the shutter speed to compensate for exposure. So what can you do to fix this? Well, if you're working next to a bright light source like a window with plenty of natural light, Use that as an advantage and place the laptop perpendicular to the source. It instantly lights up your face while also giving you a good balance of highlights and shadows. Now, what if you don't have a lot of natural light in your room? Well, you can essentially take your smartphone and enable the flashlight feature and bounce it off the wall that you're facing uh, so it essentially brightens up the space while also giving you a little bit of light uh, with your face other than just using the output from your display. Now, another tip that I could add to this is you can actually use a split screen option where you have something brighter, like a white background, on either the left or right hand side within Windows. So it'll actually act as a direct light source, which could also help with the quality Quality. This will compromise on screen real estate, but if you're not willing to do that, investing in something like a ring light uh, would probably be a better idea. You know, remember the ones that actually clip right above your laptop bezel? Yeah, those will be pretty cool. The next tip that I have is adjusting the camera settings through a few pieces of software. Now, by default, Windows has a pro mode built into its native camera application that unfortunately only lets you adjust the brightness levels, which could help with quality, but all it does is just boost the shadows and it adds more noise and it's not that great. Now, there are a few other alternatives that you could use to fine tune the color of the sensor. Let's start with OBS Studio. It's an amazing open source software for streaming and video recording. And the best part is that it's free. Now, after you install it, what you wanna do is add video capture device and then choose the integrated camera, which in this case is your webcam, and then resize the video feed to fit the frame. And then if you look closely, there is an option called properties. Click on that and it'll open a pop-up window where you'll navigate to configure video. And then you're greeted with a whole bunch of settings like gamma, contrast, brightness, saturation, hue shift, and white balance. And if you want to add your own custom LUT, you can actually do that by going into the filters tab and then choosing the color correction or the effect filters option. Essentially play around with the contrast and saturation sliders. You can also use the hue shift to illuminate a little bit of that green tone from your skin. Um, the sky is your limit. I wouldn't go too overboard with this adjustment. Just a few tweaks here and there would make your image go from something like this to something like 
this. Now, once you're happy with the changes, make sure you click on Start Virtual Camera. And then uh, when you're on Zoom or Skype or Microsoft Teams, uh, you can simply just choose the source of the camera to OBS Virtual and you're off to the races or to a meeting. Now, before I talk about my next piece of software, let's take a quick look at today's video sponsor. How would you define evolution? Perhaps constant improvement based on earlier iterations, developing a better product for the future, going from big to small, or simply building something so feature-packed I have no time to cover everything. I mean, come on, Lian Lee, this new case is incredible, and finally a proper tagline that absolutely fits. Evolution continues. Whew. The new O11 Dynamic Evo by Lian Lee. You gotta check it out below. Okay, so the next piece of software is called RTX Broadcast. Now, this will only work if you have a laptop with an RTX GPU, but the features are actually pretty cool. While the camera tab is still in beta mode, there are a handful of options that work really well. Let's start with background blur. Now, what you wanna make sure is you enable this feature by clicking the toggle. Once that's done, you can actually adjust the strength of the blur by the slider right underneath. And what blew my mind was how well it was able to separate my hands from the background. I mean, check out the difference compared to Zoom's background blur feature. It just looks more artificial and it's not well separated. There's also another feature called video noise removal. Simply put, this is just a smoothing filter that goes over your visual feed that blurs out the noise. Um, so you can actually see that as I'm pointing at the acoustic ceiling tiles. It takes away the detail, but you know, if that's the look that you're going for, it's there. There are also a few other features like background replacement and background removal. Keep in mind that you can't use all the features at the same time. And if you're wondering about GPU usage, on my Blade 15 advanced model featuring an RTX 3070, RTX broadcast was consuming about 18%. Now, if none of those tips helped improve the quality of your webcam, the last option is to use your smartphone as a webcam. This is also applicable for those of you who bought one of those ROG gaming laptops that didn't feature webcam in the first place. You know what I'm talking about? Now, if you're using an Android smartphone, there is an app called Droid Cam X, uh, which can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. Once you download that, you just have to follow the step-by-step -step guide, which includes downloading the Droid Cam client application for Windows. It also is available for Linux. Uh, it essentially uses the same Wi-Fi network to send the video feed from your smartphone to the laptop and then you can use that as a source when you're in a meeting. There's also an option to use the built-in mic on your smartphone if your laptop's mic is absolute trash. Oh, and you can also use it over USB uh, to cut back some latency. Now, if you're using an iPhone, uh, Elgato has an app called EpoCam. I hope I'm saying that right. You basically have to just download that onto the iPhone, and then there's a driver that needs to be installed on the laptop, and it basically connects over Wi-Fi automatically and uh, you can also use it over USB. Now, the only thing is that there's an Elgato watermark on your video feed, and if you want to remove that, you got to pay for the pro version. Come on, Elgato, why? Now, a few drawbacks when it comes to using your smartphone as a webcam is that you'll need to find a way to properly position it like the built-in webcam. Um, you can either have it sitting on the laptop hinge or find some other object that you could use to place it at an optimal angle, or you could find one of those laptop phone holders to just place it right above the screen. It's a bit unconventional, but hey, it's always good to have options, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much it, guys. I really hope these tips were useful, and most importantly, they don't require you to go out and spend more money. But if you're interested in investing in a proper webcam, Dimitri did a fantastic video going over some of the best options uh, in the market, including some affordable ones as well. So make sure to check that out right over here. Uh, and if you want me to do another guide featuring external accessories to help improve the quality of your video or audio feed uh, for laptops, let me know and uh, hopefully I'll you know take a crack at it. Actually, let me know in the comments down below if there are any other tips that you guys might use or have been using to improve your webcam visuals. On that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.